Hey everyone, this is Josh. I did previous videos about Marine Corps boot camp, first about receiving week, then about book knowledge. Now I'm going to discuss what is now known as phase three in Marine Corps boot camp or recruit training. I'm doing some boot camp videos now because 10 years ago today, at this time, I was in boot camp at MCRD San Diego. I graduated October 15th, 2010. And so I've been a little nostalgic lately about my Marine Corps career and especially about boot camp. Now boot camp, of course, has changed ever so slightly in the last 10 years. I'd like to think that there are always getting better and better over time. There's, of course, more updated knowledge and updated information. And they, ha of course, have to adjust things based on mission requirements. And I, I, I think they're always get, try, getting better. And one thing I noticed, actually, which I had no idea, but boot camp is organized a little bit differently. So when I went through 10 years ago, there were three phases. And phase two was the rifle range. That's where, when you learned how to shoot your weapon. But now that has been moved to phase three and they added an additional phase. So now there's a total of four phases. And your fourth phase is basically everything after uh, you become a Marine, basically, including the Crucible, which is that final test. You earn your Eagle Globe and Anchor, become a Marine, and then there's a lot of extra kind of motivational stuff that you, you go through. Uh, before you graduate. But anyway, so we're going to discuss phase three. The entirety of phase three is going to be at Camp Pendleton. The Marine Corps Recruit Depot in San Diego is about an hour south of Camp Pendleton. And so every recruit that go, every male west of the Mississippi goes to MCRD San Diego and every male at east of the Mississippi and every female overall goes to the east coast to uh, to the Marine Corps Creek Depot in Paris Island. And so things might be slightly different, but generally the, the scheduling, uh, the timing as far as what you're doing when for each training day, that's going to be all the same, but this is kind of more specific to Camp Pendleton and to the Marines that go tr train in California, or the recruits that go train in California. Uh, but no, no, nonetheless, it, it's gonna be basically the exact same on uh, the East Coast as well, if you are gonna end up going there. And so let's talk about it. Let's see, hopefully I can teach you some things, just kind of like what to expect. So phase three starts when you get on a bus with your other recruits, with everyone else in the company, and you go to Camp Pendleton. You're gonna be there for three weeks. And that's going to be a nice change of pace from being at the Recruit Depot. It's going to be a complete change of pace. When you're at MCRD San Diego, you are, you'll are you get used to it, but it's kind of annoying uh, getting taunted by all of the airplanes flying overhead because MCRD San Diego actually shares a border with the International Airport at San Diego. You will also see at MCRD San Diego all the houses off in the distance, you know, all the civilians enjoying their life. And the good thing about phase three is that you get to escape from all of that because Camp Pendleton is just a huge wide open area, so much training ground, there's ranges, and it's the perfect place to learn how to shoot your M16. You're gonna be doing a lot of hikes. You're going to be focusing not really at all on things that you were doing in phase one and phase two. You're not going to be doing much book knowledge as far as Marine Corps history. Um, there will be some. You're not going to be doing as much McMap, although there will be a review day. Here in phase three, it's all about learning how to shoot a weapon. In fact, most of your day, you're going to be away from your drill instructors. You're still going to be around your drill instructors at night when you come back to your squad bay, but the majority of the day, you'll actually be getting instructed by coaches, marksman, marksmanship co coaches. These will often be corporals or lance corporals, or even some sergeants. But this will be a huge change of pace because up until this point, you have 
your normal drone instructors, they might be gunnery sergeants or staff sergeants, maybe even uh, some sergeants, but it's going to be a complete different change of pace because they're not going to be yelling at you. They're trying to teach you how to shoot a weapon. And if you're like me, this is the first time you've ever held a weapon, let alone shot a weapon. But don't get too excited, though, because your entire first week, you're going to be doing what's called Grass Week. And this is where you snap in, uh, so to speak, where you learn just how to hold your weapon. You're only going to be using the M16A4. You're not going to be doing pistols or anything like that. All that cool other gun stuff that you'll do is later on when you go through Marine Combat Training. And the cool thing about this is this is a great first impression because you're actually going to be qualifying every year in the Marine Corps on your weapon. You have to be qualified. Now there's the saying, every Marine a rifleman, and that's true. The history of the Marine Corps supports that and also your entire Marine Corps career will be, you'll have to re-qualify. So it's not good enough to qualify as an expert just once in Marine Boot Camp. You're gonna have to qualify the next year, and the year after that, and the year after that, with very, very few exceptions. I was on Marine Security Guard duty, I didn't have to do the Marine, the normal Marine grass week and training and qualification, but I had to do the Department of State uh, one. And what's so fascinating is you learn about Marine Corps history and for example, I was a bandsman, I was a musician, but it's so important that every Marine go through this, not just because of the saying, every Marine a rifleman, but there have been many times, not so, so many, but there have been enough times in Marine Corps history where Marines that were not infantry, infantrymen, they were not O3s, they still had to use their weapon to defend their life or the lives of others around them. For example, Daryl S. Cole was a Marine musician in World War II who received the Medal of Honor. He was a musician, but he still found himself in the Pacific fighting and unfortunately died uh, in February 1945 at the age of 24. Can't even believe that. Uh, he was a sergeant, but he is a bugler. And it takes a while to become proficient in your weapons and you'll get a lot of training of course before you go to war if you do go to war but um, there are enough cases like this you know that's a medal uh, someone that received the medal of honor as a marine musician there are other cases of other very heroic people that um, that had to again defend themselves or others using their weapons so this week is is still very important every marine goes through it whether you're a going to be a rifleman or going to be a musician like I was, every Marine recruit will go through this and the training is exactly the same. The introduction is exactly the same. So your first week is grass week. And as I said before, that's where you're snapping in. You're also getting a lot of coaching where you'll just be sitting there, you'll be holding the weapon and you'll be just pointing at a target. You won't even shoot. They won't even give you any ammunition this week, but the instructors will come by and make sure that you're holding the weapon correctly, that you have good support with your body. You'll learn different stances, you know, standing and crouching or going prone. There's all, all these different techniques for each position to shoot. And the good thing is, is that you are developing here this first week, good muscle memory. And that's kind of the big thing is you want to develop good muscle, muscle memory. So that way when you do shoot, that you don't have to think about all these things. It just kind of all becomes second nature. And table one, which is the following week, that's where they actually test you. And that's where you'll actually earn your qualification badge. There are three qualification badges in the Marine Corps for the rifle. There are some extra ones, but those are so incredibly rare. Those are for competition shooting. You'll basically never see it. I never saw it in person. But for the rifle and pistol, which is rifle and pistol badge, which, which is what you wear in your uniform, either your dress blue Bravos or service alphas, if I remember correctly, you'll wear your, every Marine will wear their rifle badge. And if you are lucky or fortunate enough, you'll also wear a pistol badge. Or if you get high, high enough rank, everyone 
Marines that are higher rank, you know, Staff Sergeant above, they have to shoot the pistol. So let's get to it. So there's three badges. There is Marksman, Sharpshooter, and Expert. Now, if you don't know, all if you didn't know any better, all those sound really good. Oh, I'm a Marksman. I'm a you know, Marine Marksman. Well, that's actually the lowest qualification for the rifle. And the good thing is that once you learn it, it's kind of obvious. Uh, and it's the same for pistols as well, so you don't have to learn something else for the pistols. And you'll be tested on this, by the way, in boot camp on your written test. So it's good to know this. So expert is expert. That's the highest qualification badge you can possibly get. There are two cross rifles. And yeah, you can't, no matter how, even if you get perfect, but you want to get as close as you can to perfect of course, because it helps you, you know, for your rank to get promoted. Uh, but you'll wear an expert rifle badge. And for me, I can say, uh, you know, kind of a humble brag here. I always scored expert on the rifle, even though I had never fired a weapon before in my life. And that's not really a testament to me. That's just a testament to the training. Uh, a lot of people that had never fired a rifle before in their lives, a lot of them score expert because they never developed all these bad habits, so they don't have to relearn how to do things. And so for those of you future recruits that have never fired a weapon before and are nervous, don't be nervous. I've, I've, I've heard this lame advice where you know they say, oh, go to a rifle range before you go to boot camp so you'll be more prepared. No. You want to learn it the Marine Corps way. You want to learn it how they teach you. It's going to be probably the best way, uh, you know, for most people. And so it's good just to wait, and you'll, you'll stand a good chance of being expert. Also, you're, you're just got to be a good student. You know, they'll teach you how to do everything. You'll they'll teach you how weapon ballistics work. Uh, you know, the speed of the of the round when you shoot it, um, and all of that crazy crazy stuff. They'll they'll give you a book, and you'll. Uh, you know, have some some of that information. The next week, is, you know, so that week, table one. So first week is grass week. Second week is table one, and that's kind of like the the most exciting thing. But then you gotta get to do some fun stuff. At the last week, the third week of phase three, and that's field week and table two. Field week is you do patrolling. You do some kind of basic things like that out in the field. You learn. Land navigation. I was never very good at land navigation, but then after that, you do table two, and that kind of wraps up your phase three. And table two is where you get to actually do kind of the more fun shooting. You'll get to shoot your weapon on burst. Uh, up to this point, you've only fired your weapon on single shot, it's the most accurate. Table two, you'll shoot your weapon on burst, you'll be up and close and personal. Maybe you do it, even do some night shooting, maybe, but. Uh, What's so crazy is that the, through this whole time, you know, especially through table one, is you're learning how to shoot your M16A4 at 300 yards. That's where they test you. And they test you at different ranges, and you have to score, um, you know, standing and crouched and prone at all different ranges up to 300 yards. But I'd be curious to hear from those of you that have gone through it recently, because when I went through in 2010, we had to shoot on iron sights. And from what I understand now is you get a, an ACOG scope, which is like, I, I think, a four times scope, so you can see your target a little bit easier. Uh, but I'd like to think it was it, it's easier to shoot on iron sights because maybe there's a, less to adjust. Um, of course, you do have to adjust your iron sights as well, but um, I was never very good at ACOG. Uh, when I shot at the range later on in my Marine Corps career, I never scored as high as I did in boot camp when I shot on iron sights. So any of you that have gone through boot camp recently, I'd love to hear how the ACOG site worked for you. So anyway, that is phase three of Marine Corps boot camp. Phase three, as soon as you get through it, it's basically the beginning of the end for you because right after phase three, you have the crucible where you'll become a Marine. Phase one and phase two is all kind of the basics of Marine Corps knowledge and, you know, marching and McMap and stuff. But phase three is so exciting because you actually get to shoot your weapon for the first time. It's kind of fun. If you have any comments or suggestions for future videos, 
as they pertain to the Marine Corps or to Marine Corps boot camp, please feel free to leave a comment. I'd be happy to talk about it uh, to address your question in a future video. Anyway, hope you learned something, and I will see you guys later.